Welcome back to my Transformers Animated Episode Reviews. Today, we're taking a look at the episode SUV, Society of Ultimate Villainy. In this episode, some of the supervillains in this show team up and create their own sort of Legion of Doom or Injustice League. But they are in for a surprise when it turns out that their benefactor is the intergalactic arms dealer, Swindle. This episode begins with the Autobots chasing Nanosec. How come he looks young again? Mm, wrinkle cream? I just noticed that there's something weird going on with the trees that they're driving by. If you pause the video, it looks like the leaves are really blocky. And it just seems to be like a pattern of leaves that they've masked vaguely in the shape of a tree. They remind me of low-res trees in video games. Also, in some shots of the street, there are no trees lining the sides of it, and in others, there are. Eh, I don't know. It's probably not even worth bringing up, as I don't think most people will notice it anyways, but it just kind of stood out to me for some reason. So, someone uses stasis on Bumblebee, and Nanosec escapes. All units, crime in progress, circuit guys electronics. Hey, I didn't know you had a police radio. Me neither. I mean, he scanned Captain Fanzone's car. They even made a point of how they look alike a couple episodes ago. Why would he not have a police radio? Also, B has been on Earth for how long, and he hasn't played with his radio this entire time? So B and Sari come across the angry archer robbing an electronics store. But yet again, he is frozen and the supervillain escapes. The two then respond to a 402 at an arcade. Besides, we've got a 402! You don't even know what a 402 is. Actually, a 402 isn't a real police code, or at least not one that would actually apply to Professor Princess attacking an arcade. Speaking of which, we can see that the arcade building is decorated with many classic video game references, such as Mario, Tetris, and Space Invaders. Hmm. You know how Derek Wyatt has his toy store in Transformers Animated? I think if I were to ever get to work on a Transformers cartoon, I would want to have my own arcade in the show. Maybe design it after Flynn's arcade in Tron. But once again, B is slowed down and Professor Princess escapes. An all-spark fragment? Somebody must have got a hold of one and he's using it to slow you down. But who? Well, it turns out to be the new villain Slow-Mo. And I must say, I love her. I love her superpower. And I love her old Hollywood, transatlantic accent. Pretty nifty, eh? In case you were wondering, this is what reversed the aging process on your turbo suit. Freshened you up, put back that youthful pep in your step. You did that? For me? Mm, I'm a big fan of your work. Which seems kind of random and out of place in futuristic Detroit, but it is kind of sexy and somehow works for the character. Maybe she's putting the accent on as part of her supervillain disguise. Kind of like how Batman puts on his growly voice. But still, I love it and it kind of adds a nice flavor to the character. So the supervillains form their group and pull their first heist. But when they're in need of a getaway car, they are gifted one by a mysterious benefactor. And I love how Professor Princess is in one of those child seats. It's kind of cute. Although, it is kind of weird that Swindle already had one in his vehicle mode. What, did he scan some soccer mom's car? Handles like a dream, doesn't it? Also, plenty of cargo space for your stolen loot. And don't even get me started on a cup holder. This reminds me of when the recruits got their new alt modes in Rescue Bots Academy, and they had this kind of running joke about cup holders. What is it with Transformers and cup holders? It's a truck. Big one. Push the red button. Wait, I thought you weren't supposed to push the red button. Oh, the red button there, kid. Don't ever, ever touch the red button. No. We could auction this invention off to the highest bidder for a boatload of cash? How big a boat are we talking? Does the name Titanic ring any bells? I'm the king of the world! 
One of my explosive shafts shall make short work of yon padlock. Wait, did he say explosive shaft? Don't pull that out. This is supposed to be a kid's show. Okay, we need to steal that satellite dish off the roof. Done. Ooh, I like a man who works fast. That is what she said. Ha 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 ha. And I like a girl who takes it slow. SOS, loke DJL. That's what he says. So the supervillains assemble Swindle's device, and he reveals himself to be the robot in disguise that he is. The name's Swindle. I'm what you might call an intergalactic arms dealer. And thanks to you, I now have in my possession the slickest weapon in the galaxy. By the way, I can't forget to mention how Swindle is played by the late, great Fred Willard, who does an amazing job playing Swindle as this kind of sleazy used car salesman type. You may recognize him from the countless movies and TV shows that he's been in. From Anchorman, to Everybody Loves Raymond, to Wally. You've probably seen or heard him in something. And honestly, I think this is some of the most perfect casting that I've ever seen. Fred Willard did an absolutely amazing job as Swindle. And I will always associate Swindle with his take on the character. Megatronic force field emitter. A little something I picked up in an arms deal with a Vok of Nexus Zero. Nice creatures, the Vok. I absolutely love that we got a Vok reference in this show. As a huge Beast Wars fan, this makes my spark smile. So Swindle uses Magnesis to steal Slow-Mo's timepiece. Can you tell that I'm really in the mood to play some Breath of the Wild? And he contacts Megatron to try and sell him his new weapon. How did you get this frequency? A mutual bounty hunting friend provided it in exchange for a weapon or two. Nice. This is obviously a reference to Lockdown, making for some great world building. Swindle's device amplifies the power of Slow-Mo's timepiece, immobilizing every machine and robot in Detroit. So, Sari is forced to team up with the villains in order to get Bumblebee back to normal. Why should we trust you? Because the enemy of my enemy is my friend. What? You know what they say, kid. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Aww, Professor Princess actually learned something. Also, isn't it funny how she rides a magical pony and she's talking about friendship? Hmm, why does that sound familiar? So they get Bumblebee to Sumdak Tower, where they all receive shielding from the slow-mo wave's effects. They defeat Swindle, but of course, the villains double-cross our heroes. Not so fast! This ticker belongs to my girl, Slow-Mo. Aww. I knew Nanosecond Slow-Mo were a couple. They look so cute together. Bumblebee reflects the Slow-Mo beam back at Swindle, locking him in stasis. And the villains are apprehended. And the episode ends with Bumblebee learning a lesson about teamwork. And as for your getaway car, uh, it'll be stripped and sold for parts at police auction. Yeah should fetch a pretty good price. I know this is supposed to be a joke about Swindle being an arms dealer, and now he himself is going to be sold for parts, but I can't help but think how dark this is. This would be like the human equivalent of black market organ harvesting. By the way, shouldn't Ratchet be opposed to this? Oh, it's primitive. It's barbaric. There ought to be a law against it. Thankfully, Swindle won't actually be dissected, but he would end up in the custody of the Elite Guard in a future episode. But we'll get to that later. Well, this was an amazing episode of Transformers Animated. Again, I can't stress how great Fred Willard was as Swindle. Just totally perfect casting. And I know some people don't like the supervillains in Transformers Animated, but I found this episode quite charming. Especially slow-mo. I wish we could have gotten to see more of her again. And her little romance with Nanosec was pretty cute. They make a good couple. You know, because he goes fast, and she makes things slow. Again, this was a fantastic episode, and I'm pretty sure it made it into my top 10. What about you? What did you think of this episode at Transformers Animated? As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and do all that other fun stuff. 
and I'll see you next week for the next episode of Transformers Animated Auto Boot Camp, which is definitely going to be an interesting one. So I'll see you next week for that.